Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? Certainly, Captain. I was hoping you would ask. It was the law forsaken parasites. I had become obsessed. My quest to stop them. To avenge my partner, Philip. And my ex partner, Bernice. And Lieutenant Jurgen. And those two informants had brought me to Rizzo's distillery. But it wasn't just the triple distilled deliciousness of Rizzo Spectrum brand vodka that I found there. It was death. I made sure the Brain Eaters paid the price. But at what cost to me? News Network with breaking news. Halcyon Helen has been murdered. Administrator Ludovico of Rizzo's refused to answer the big question on everyone's mind. Who will Spectrum Vodka's next spokesperson be? Claiming that a special investigation must be concluded first. Captain, we have a communication coming in from one Administrator Ludovico. Get off the transmission, Cedric. We agreed to let me do the negotiating. Law be with you, friend. I am Administrator Ludovico of the famed Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. But there's no need to stand on formality. You may address me as Mr. Halcyon Helen is dead. Murdered. Her death is the tragedy of our lifetime. As the face of our new product line, her murder is a stain on the Rizzo's brand. She was scheduled to unveil our newest product, Spectrum Brown, before this tragic event. But we cannot move forward with our unveiling until we apprehend the killer. All right, Ludovico, that's enough. You don't know what you're doing. Let me handle this. Captain Hawthorne, Sublight's favorite freelancer. I'm such an admirer of your work. Cedric Kincannon, Sublight Underground. I'm so glad we're hiring a third-party investigator. No one wants to see a troop of UDL guards stomping all over my hotel. Least of all me. The murder of Halcyon Helen is a heinous assault on this colony. I look forward to watching you find the miscreant responsible and drag them out of the shadows. Stupid actor. Oh, Captain. This isn't Spencer Woolrich we're talking about. This is Halcyon Helen, Princess of Periodicals, Duchess of Dramaturgy. You would not believe the money she made us on Dissident Busters. For law's sake, Cedric, could you show a little discretion and not bring up your contraband operations in front of an outsider? Ludovico, you wound me. I'm establishing rapport with our new contractor. Let's not give him the impression that you can't be trusted. Do you really want to do this right now, Cedric? You want to antagonize me while I'm negotiating a contract? Because I promise you, I'll win. We can do this anytime you want. I'll even make an appointment. I'm sure your schedule's wide open. What with your product launch being indefinitely delayed due to unforeseen murder. 
All right, Cedric. If that's how you want to behave, I have no choice but to file an official reprimand on your permanent record. Oh, please do. I'd love an official reprimand from a failed executive. Could you do me a favor and have it laminated? Could we please stop this nonsense? Captain, I'm Constable Maria Keene. Hiring a third-party investigator was my idea. I've been studying your dossier. You're a talented diplomat. You know how to ask questions, and you have a gift for getting answers without resorting to violence. As far as I'm concerned, you're the ideal inspector for this case. I'm pleased to hear that. The future of our complex may depend on your success. I'll leave you in the constable's care. Mr. Kincannon and I must have a word. Fine. Bud Rizzo's is paying for that hotel room. I can't tell you how grateful I am for your help. And even though they may not show their gratitude, I know Administrator Ludovico and Mr. Kincannon appreciate your involvement. Mr. Kincannon could lose his spaceport if board authorities took over the investigation. And if Rizzo's is forced to cancel its unveiling, we might never recover. Helen was more than popular. She gave something to this colony that no product line could ever provide. Real happiness. No one has ever been as well known or as well loved. Uh, outside of our courageous business leaders. Me? Worn out? <laughs> Perish the notion. My days are filled with catering to the oh-so-reasonable requests of Mr. Ludovico and Mr. Kincannon. What's not to like? Your words, not mine. Please don't take my lack of disagreement as anything other than fatigue. I am a content, productive, and happy member of our society. The Administrator oversees Rizzo's operations. Cedric runs the hotel and the spaceport. They're always at each other's throats. My life would be so much easier if they'd simply learn to work together. I represent the law, Captain. But what's happening between Mr. Kincannon and the Administrator is... politics. Politics are not my area of expertise. The law is simple. Politics are complicated. I'm pleased to hear that. From everything I've heard, you're a competent freelancer. And at the risk of sounding impertinent, we desperately need the help of someone competent. Thank you for your time, Captain. Whenever you're ready, I've authorized the Unreliable to land at the Grand Colonial. Transmission terminated. Captain, we are now cleared to land at the Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. Eridanos is a hydrogen helium gas giant, distinguished by a well-defined ring system. The Eridanos atmospheric complex is a system of land masses propelled through a thin layer of the upper atmosphere, where humans are potentially capable of surviving. There are several reasons why someone would hire your services. In descending order of likelihood, they are as follows. Desperation, confusion, mistaken identity, inebriation, and genuine faith in your abilities.
really, you should be listening to those serials with Felix. They're gonna give you funny ideas about human mechanical relationships, but I am not this one. Uh, evening, Captain. Or is it afternoon? I don't know how long I've been up here. Something busted, Captain? Scanning for C, two, five, four, seven. Grade rated contaminants. Hey, Cap. Good to see you, boss. Something on your mind? As always, I am at your disposal. Anything you'd like to discuss? Remember that you are not insured.
Oh, Captain, it's beautiful up here. Could we... Could we get more jobs like this one? Hello, hello, hello there. Hope your atmospheric entry wasn't too troublesome. As a guest of honor, you deserve the best in comfort. Sublight Salvage and Shipping Underground, or Slug, as we like to call ourselves, is delighted to welcome you to Eridanos. I'm the Grand Colonial Head Bellhop. I'm here to grab your bags and direct you, the inspector, to the Grand Ballroom, which was the scene of the crime. I can try. I was the one who found Helen's body in the Grand Ballroom. Corpse wasn't in the best shape. Aside from that, I don't know a whole lot. Helen was supposed to host the unveiling for Rizzo's newest product, Spectrum Brown. Until you catch the killer, the unveiling's been indefinitely postponed. Helen's death has been a shock for many. A lot of people are inconsolable. Hell, even Black Hole Birdie, Helen's bow has wandered off. Some folks think he had something to do with the murder, but I don't believe it. Hey, Black Hole Birdie may be a savage brute on the field of honor, but he's no killer. I still don't understand why anyone would have it in for Ms. Helen. Folks get heated when it comes to serials and their actors, I suppose. Mm, not particularly, but I think some folks were jealous of her success or otherwise viewed her as a threat. Reckon how she came about her fame didn't help. Why, she was a natural. People fell in love with her. She managed to wrangle up a following all on her own. She ended up about as famous and high-runged as your average VP, which rubbed a lot of Byzantines the wrong way. Actors ain't supposed to get preferential treatment. Let's see here. Oh, I already spoke briefly about the Spectrum unveiling, or lack thereof. It's still an awful shame. A lot of folks looking forward to that. You bet it was. Rizzo's rented out the ballroom in the hotel just for the launch event. Reckoned it was gonna be a real swell affair. Rizzo's ain't unveiled the product since the debut of Spectrum Ultraviolet. Invisible to the naked eye and, as it happened, prone to causing massive internal bleeding. Anyway, I think I've held you up long enough. Once you're ready, head down to the lobby. The ballroom is just behind the elevators. Meanwhile, I'll grab your bags. You're certain? All right, then. Guess we can probably set you up with some spare uniforms if you must yours. Troublemakers out of airlocks. We just throw them over the edge.
around for your supervisor. I'm sure you could, but we fed our last box of grievance forms into the incinerator a few months ago. Is there anything I can do for you in the meantime? I cannot believe this. Bertie Holcomb is likely beside himself in grief. I'm pretty happy working for Slug. Mr. Kin Cannon treats us with respect. Sublight Underground takes care of its own. I'm pretty happy working for Slug. Mr. Kincannon treats us with respect. We don't toss troublemakers out of airlocks. I've spent at the Grand Colonial? Is my patronage worth nothing to you? I'm sure you've spent a lot, sir, but unfortunately we can't make any exceptions. Can't make any exceptions. In Byzantium, those words would be a criminal offense. Shame we're not in Byzantium. Inspector. No need to check in here. Your paperwork has all been processed. You should be able to find the Colonial right ahead. I hope you catch the killer soon, Inspector. I don't want to see the Grand Colonial shut down. spending a fortune just standing here. Bertie Holcomb is likely beside himself in grief. Bertie Holcomb is likely beside himself in grief. I can't imagine someone wretched enough to do such a thing. You don't think a dissident could be here, do you? Get a hold of yourself. The administrator would never allow someone as dangerous as a dissident here. Eridanos is safe. This is all just a terrible coincidence. Of course, of course, you are absolutely right. I think the idea of a psychopath wandering among us is just making me nervous. Bertie Holcomb is likely beside himself in grief. You know? I never imagined Spencer Woolrich would outlive Halcyon Helen.
people air I'll bet you 10 bits this is all just some sort of publicity stunt Mr. Kincannon really knows how to run a hotel No, I never imagined Spencer Woolrich would outlive Halcyon Helen With Halcyon Helen gone does that mean Spencer Woolrich will get all her roles? I certainly hope not. That man doesn't even act as well as I do. You know, I never imagined Spencer Woolrich would outlive Halcyon Helen. You know, I never imagined Spencer Woolrich would outlive Halcyon Helen. The crime scene's awaiting, Inspector. Can't believe something like this could happen in my hotel. When I found her, I was just hoping she had a little too much to drink, but... All the grievous bodily injury adds up, I suppose. Hey, Byzantines and restraint aren't two words that often go together. Wouldn't be the first blood-soaked, unconscious party-goer I've come across. Anyway, I'm sure you've got questions. Sure, I'd take into checking the barroom every few hours prior to the unveiling. Just to make sure no sprats had snuck into the place. You understand? Found her right before I was set to head back to my room in the lower levels for my mandated five-hour sleep period. Tell ya. Thank the law for caffeinoid. Been too upset to get a wink of sleep since. And hey, now I can finally see smells. Beats all hell out of me. Maybe she was, uh, practicing for the unveiling? What? No! Just because I found the corpse doesn't mean I made her a corpse. I was in shift all day. Besides, I loved Helen cereals. Well, the old ones anyway. The newer episodes are hot junk on a warm day. Sure. What's on your mind? Of course I did. I just told you I found the body. Oh, wait. Uh, you mean when she was still breathing? Um, uh, no, no, of course I didn't. Plus, it's untoward for an employee to speculate about the actions of a hotel guest. Not that I saw any hotel guests interacting with her. Honestly, you're more than a little right. <laughs> I've been burning at the britches to share my theories. Day of her death, I saw Helen leave the hotel premises with the profit of profitability. And didn't see her come back. A little on the suspicious side, I think. Seemed especially strange, seeing how, as far as I was aware, the two didn't get on. Uh, yep. Gives seminars on increasing profit margins and the like. Can't say much else, seeing how I ain't in the gossip market. As far as I can recall, Helen dismissed the ladies' seminars in some kind of interview. Said her co-star used them, but she didn't. The top rungers are always ready to read between the lines of famous folks and seem to think the profit was on her way out. Woman lost a ton of bits and is set to lose more. I hope all that helped. I'd like to be as useful as I can in the investigation. I just didn't want to steer anyone the wrong way. Everyone's got theories. I don't reckon mine hold much more weight than anyone else's.
Welcome to the Grand Colonial. Please make yourself at home. Sublight Underground appreciates your patronage. Black Hole Bertie's disappeared, you know. That poor fellow must be inconsolable. I can't believe Helen's gone. We're never going to get a sequel to Terror on Monarch. You know, I never imagined Spencer Woolrich would outlive Halcyon Helen. Mr. Kincannon really knows how to run a hotel. I can't believe Helen's gone. We're never gonna get a sequel to Terror on Monarch. Mr. Kincannon really knows how to run a hotel. Sublight Underground appreciates your patronage. Rizzo's cares about the happiness of his family. Spacer's choice can't say that. We're all part of the Rizzo's family. Oh, thank the law. Inspector, you don't know how relieved I am to see you. Constable Maria Keane. It's good to meet you in person, Inspector. Dr. Goodnight. Ecstatic to make your various acquaintances and so on? Are we finished with the pleasantries? There's something I'm excited to show you. What body? Oh, that. Goodness, no. This is far more interesting than Halcyon Helen's rapidly cooling corpse. Our coroner has developed a device which may prove useful in your investigation. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Oh, please. You make it sound as if I'm turning over stolen goods. Behold, my discrepancy amplifier. Hold it in your hands. Feel the way it hums with ontological potential. I work with the materials to which I have access. Halcyon has no shortage of rifles. The discrepancy amplifier uses a deterministic model of our universe to detect the discrepancy between what should be and what actually is. Then it renders any discrepancies visible by using the power of magnification. It's... yes. It's a magnifying glass, but an extraordinarily powerful one. It looks through the glass of reality itself. I'm contractually prohibited from endorsing off-brand technology, but I'll bend that rule just this once. You'll want to peer into the amplifier and examine the crime scene. Take a look at the crime scene. I'll stay out of your way until you're done. Go on, Inspector. Give the amplifier a try. The discrepancy amplifier is designed to be held in your hand and maneuvered about, not unlike a small arms weapon. Peer through the looking glass and aim the amplifier about. Examine the crime scene. Find a discrepancy and make a deduction. Simplicity itself. Ah, I was waiting for this. Yes, of course. I'm only too eager to cooperate. Our leading lady must have riled up someone. Her wounds from cranium to metatarsal are as follows. A blow to the head, severe enough to lacerate the flesh. Followed by a suite of plasma burns down the neck and back, signs of poisoning, evidence of inanition and desiccation, possible signs of jaundice, some shingles, one malformed toenail. That's good advice. I'll just strike out malformed toenail as a possible cause of death. The short version is this. 
Helen was killed by poison, a blow to the head, and a plasma weapon. Possibly more. I am, of course, at your service. Oh, good. One of my favorite subjects. Ask away, my dear. Ask away. Hmm. I didn't expect an existentialist question so early today. It's a need. Just as sprats feel they must breed, or canids feel they must brutally maul each other. I feel the need to create. You're smarter than I look. Guess there's no shame in telling you exactly what it is you're using, seeing how you're so curious. As it so happened, my husband was mortally wounded in a marauder raid about a year ago. Wasn't going to live more than a few hours. I happened to have an excess of preservative fluids, a scanning device in need of a central processor, and a sudden burst of inspiration. A tragedy doesn't mean you can't be proactive. Technically, it wasn't his whole brain, just a small cross-section, enough to operate the amplifier. But giving the amplifier to you is better than letting it rot in a closet somewhere. Besides, my husband was the prior constable. He would have wanted his brain used for the pursuit of justice. Because you're the inspector. I should think that's rather obvious. I invented the discrepancy amplifier to assist me in my own medical work. When you were hired to investigate Helen's death, I realized I had my own part to play. I programmed the amplifier to assist you. I'm entrusting it to your care because I want to see my invention help a brilliant inspector solve the murder of the century. You don't miss a thing, do you, inspector? I can see why the constable recommended hiring you. Think of the amplifier as my gift to you. May it avail you in the swift and efficient prosecution of justice. I still have the blueprint and several extra prototypes floating around, but I might recommend you try to be careful with it. Some of the amplifier's internal components are rare, shall we say, and I don't have an indefinite supply. You sure you don't want to know anything else? Oh, all right. We can change the subject. Oh, why I'm flattered, Inspector. Let me think. I've worked at the Grand Colonial for about as long as it's been around. Prior to that, I lived in Byzantium, but I always felt like it was missing something. And that something turned out to be corpses. Byzantium has much in the way of luxury, but examining the dead does not rank amongst the preferred activities of the elite. Absolutely. Usually I'm just a medical practitioner, so I almost never get to deal with anything as unique or as quiet as a corpse. The most interesting thing I saw prior to this was the back of Mr. Woolrich's throat after he blew out his vocal cords shouting at an attendant. If I weren't here, I'd be back in my quarters, rewatching Byzantium in the spring or working on my automatic sprat peeler. Oh, good. One of my favorite subjects. Ask away, my dear. Ask away. You sure you don't want to know anything else? Oh, all right. We can change the subject. Captain! Please show a little respect. This unit has detected a discrepancy related to Halcyon Helen. Unscheduled expiration.
the discrepancy amplifier is now operational. Greetings, designated inspector and or unauthorized larcenist. This unit has detected a discrepancy related to Halcyon Helen. Unscheduled expiration of. Begin amplification. The discrepancy amplifier has been programmed with advanced speech recognition, scientific analysis, and deterministic calculus protocols. Oh, you'll love this. Amplifier, tell the inspector about your features. Please do not interrupt the discrepancy amplifier. The discrepancy amplifier is programmed to take instruction from its registered or designated inspector. How curious. I must have set its impertinence levels to flagrant. This unit's features include an automated personality simulator. This unit has been programmed to simulate joy and satisfaction in assisting you. This footprint stands out from the normally spotless floor of the Grand Ballroom. Typically, the ballroom is cleaned twice daily, which means this must have been made by either Helen or her assailant or assailants. Footprint is a tailor-made 8.75, suggesting that its owner was very particular about their shoe size. It is also the exact size that Halcyon Helen typically prefers. There are traces of dirt throughout the footprint. The dirt carries traces of fertilizer, as well as the faint signs of crushed purpleberries and grass. Grass, fertilizer, and purpleberries can all be found in the purpleberry orchards, located not far from the Grand Colonial. This deduction appears... sound. Good work, Inspector. I had a feeling we'd make some progress once we brought you onto the case. You'll need Administrator Ludovico to grant you access to the orchards. Contact him through the secure access terminal in your penthouse suite. Check in with the concierge. Your room should be ready by now. If it isn't, I may have to go shake someone by the collar. Something I should know? Are you asking me these questions in an official capacity? I'm encouraged to know you're taking this job seriously. Please, ask your questions. Norville, head bellhop. He was understandably distraught. I believe his feelings were genuine. He's a remarkably poor actor. Hotel security corroborates his whereabouts during the murder. I haven't included him in my list of suspects, but neither am I convinced of his innocence. I'm a little suspicious of anyone who enjoys his job as much as Norval. He's also obsessive in his appreciation of Helen's work. Obsessive passion can lead to irrational behavior. It's a fact of modern science. If there were any witnesses, none came forward. Ballroom cameras were also offline at the time of the murder. Helen was very particular about having cameras on her. Security footage would have constituted documentary filmmaking. Can't afford that. There's no sign of the murder weapon. Whatever it was that killed Helen, the killer took it with them. 
Frankly, I'm having trouble imagining exactly what it was that killed her. Helen was known to carry her signature weapon, a bespoke handgun known as the Needler. There was no sign of any such weapon on her body. The Needler's real? I watched her use that thing in the gunfight at the end of Terror on Monarch. You keep excitable company. I hope they won't complicate your investigation by touching things. Spencer Woolrich and Bertie Holcomb are officially persons of interest in this investigation. I've mostly ruled out Mr. Woolrich, leaving Bertie Holcomb as my lead suspect. Let me rephrase that. He's your lead suspect. I've been instructed to turn this case over to your capable hands, while I continue to serve as a consultant. I know. This entire affair is beginning to sound suspiciously like a two-bit serial. Mr. Woolrich was Halcyon Helen's professional rival. It's possible jealousy drove him to take Helen out of the picture. I apologize for the wordplay. Conversely, Mr. Bertie Holcomb was Helen's paramour. The relationship was reportedly dissolved. I can't rule out her murder as a crime of passion. Woolrich thinks of himself as a serious and distinguished actor. He was frequently cast in demeaning roles, while Helen played the charismatic heroine. He has reason to be envious. I considered the possibility that Woolrich killed Helen in order to eliminate a rival and advance his own career, but my reasoning collapsed under closer scrutiny. Woolrich owes his career to Helen's dramas. Her death likely harms his long-term prospects. I'm struggling to determine a motivation for him, so I've largely ruled him out. Mr. Holcomb was in a romantic relationship with Helen. This alone is not enough to make him a lead suspect, but he does play tossball. Black Hole Birdie currently holds the record for most non-consecutive blows to the head. His tendency toward irrational and violent behavior is well documented. Please, ask your questions. Anything else? You've got my cooperation. Anything else? I'm afraid I must decline. It isn't personal, Inspector. I'm just on duty right now. Talk to me later, after you've met with Administrator Ludovico. I'll make time to chat. Like you've got something to say. You're uh, really digging around Helen's body for clues, huh?
timeline discrepancy detected nearby. I knew I should have gotten her autograph when I had the chance. Look at these people, gawking over Helen's corpse. Bunch of parasites. This is a bottle of unreleased Rizzo's product. Helen appears to have attempted to use it to spell something as she expired. But all she managed was a sticky bee. This hypothesis is plausible, but requires additional information. I was wondering about that. Before we arrived, I heard something on the Aether Waves about Black Hole Birdie taken up at the Grand Colonial. Correct. Birdie Black Hole Holcomb is a registered guest at the Grand Colonial Hotel. Accessing guest database B, the Grand Colonial Hotel is proud to serve the following VIPs. Bertie, comma, Black Hole, Burbage 3001. This evidence has been recorded for later reference. Now generating pre-approved compliment. Splendid work, Inspector. my favorite jacket in there. Black Hole Bertie hasn't been seen since Helen's death. Awfully suspicious, right? Actually, a lot of people seem to be missing lately. But I see your point about him specifically. Finally checked in, I see. I hope you're fond of the penthouse. It's pretty much the best seat in the whole hotel. You shouldn't want for any amenity you might find elsewhere. Should act as a better headquarters for the investigation than any space dust covered ship. That and you ain't got room service on a ship. You ever need anything, come find me. Even if you don't, you can still swing by. I'm always happy to chat. Oh, of course. That is, uh... Maybe not on a personal level, but I'm one of her biggest fans. Even started an association of like-minded individuals. I'd lament not having anything to meet about anymore, but the newer tribe just ain't done it for us. Still, there goes my hopes of a Terra on Monarch reunion episode. Sorry, friend, but I guess you don't get it. Helen was special, had a certain quality about her, like she would really go out and fight injustice. You look at Woolrich, and no disrespect to the man, but you just don't get the same feeling. He reminds me more of a vacuum suit without nobody in it. Uh, don't tell him I said that. Now, what can I lend a hand with? I suppose you could call it that, but that don't mean I poked around her room or nothing while she was out. That'd be a huge breach of hotel policy. Besides, knowing Helen's athletic acumen, anyone who tried probably would have been found, beaten senseless, then hurled into the hallway followed by the contents of a garbage bin. Probably, that is. It'd probably happen, but it didn't. Uh, I'm just theorizing. Notice my battle-hardened physique, have you? Used to be in a mighty mean line of work. Been shot at 35 times. That is, um, I've been near people who were shot at 35 times. But to be honest, I never really enjoyed it, you know? It's one thing to tightrope walk between life and death every day, but for just a handful of bits? Nah. 
When this position came up, I jumped on it and made a lateral move from sublight to slug. I ain't ever looked back. Hmm, well, slug is something like an offshoot of sublight. It ain't too difficult to pivot from one part of the same company to another. Disconnects or no? That said, my departure may have been somewhat hasty. I mean, yes, but I still earned Sublet a hell of a lot of bits. Basically, I singled out a ship to salvage that I thought had been out for use for years. As it turns out, it belonged to a wealthy Byzantine who used it only to vacation. As it so happened, I still don't think she tried to use it, too satisfied with the luxuries of Byzantium. Still, I figured it was a good time to turn tail, in case that ever changed. Stories, huh. Actually, I think I got a couple now that you mention it. There used to be a whole toss belt court on one of the planetoids, but they ripped it out. Bench clears are a tad too lethal when there's an endless drop on every side. Well, Slug is more trustworthy for one thing, where Sublight is all about back alleys and backstabbing. Slug can be trusted not to salvage your ship when you turn your head. Please do. We should try to solve the puzzle hedges in the orchards. The prize is supposed to be something valuable. I'm sorry, sir, but while the hotel is an active crime scene, I regret to inform you that all new bookings, room upgrades, room downgrades, and in-room massages are suspect. Oh, you're the special inspector. Mr. Kincannon warned me you'd be checking in soon. Ah, yes. We are most pleased to offer you our grandest of grand accommodations, Inspector. The penthouse suite on our topmost floor is now available for you. The last guest left her belongings behind when she vacated unexpectedly, so we needed a little time to tidy the suite up for you. Simply call the elevator in the lobby and our highly skilled operator will deliver you to your private floor with efficiency and cheer. I'd love to, Inspector, but I don't really have the authority. Moreover, the guests were promised exclusivity. If I let you up there, I'll never hear the end of it. Hmm, that's a good point. If they give me guff, I can just tell them that they're obstructing justice. That has a nice ring to it. Let me just set you up with VIP guest floor access. Done. You can now come and go as you please. It certainly is a marvel of modern ingenuity, luxury, and ambition. Please, allow me to answer any curiosities you might have about our building and the amenities on offer. Twice the size of the next biggest room, and kitted out with any amenity you want, as well as many that you won't. Best to enjoy it while you can, Inspector. Typically, the only people who can afford the penthouse suite have enough bits to suffocate everyone on Terra 2. Also, please inform me if Woolridge gives you a hard time about getting a better room than his. Don't tell him I said this, but everyone on staff wants to strangle him. Most certainly. All the important folks can be found in the utmost parts of the hotel. You can hardly walk three feet without bumping into a tossball great or a bored exec. Though maybe don't bump into them. Could be harmful to your health. Who would be interested in a staff-only area? Most folks never ask about the sewers beneath a Rizzo's plant, either. Of interest to your investigation? Well, 
I suppose there is that one door we're not supposed to open. But I'm sorry, Inspector, I'm not authorized to grant you access to any staff sections of the hotel. You'll have to find a way in on your own. If you're sure. My apologies, Inspector, but that would be a severe violation of guest privacy. We here at the Grand Colonio firmly believe that... All right, my supervisor just walked out of earshot. Some folks just don't understand the importance of gossip. About whom? And what would you wish to know? You know, out of everyone here, I probably knew the least about Helen. I'm not much of an Aether Wave watcher myself. And Helen always had a crowd of admirers chasing her, you see? So she rarely stopped to chat. Friendly enough, surely, but always seemed untouchable. Emphasis on seemed. Everyone wanted to be around Helen. She could usually be seen alongside Bertie or Woolrich, for obvious reasons. Ah, Bertie. Is he bigger than he is dumb, or dumber than he is big? I have a bet with a friend. Not sure we'll ever get it to pay out. Bertie used to be Helen's beau, though he isn't anymore and not just because she's dead. If I had a million bits, I'd spend everyone just to learn what caused their split. Her deal? Not making them. I'd laugh at my own comment, but everyone knows there's no bigger joke than the prophet of profitability herself. Didn't you hear Helen's interview? That woman is the definition of humbuggery. Anyone who gives her the time of day is a right fool. I mean, Spencer Woolrich has taken several of her productivity seminars and look where it got him. Don't waste your time. If looks could kill, he'd have put her in the ground 10 times over. Man's clearly jealous of her success compared to his. See, I'd bet we're the only two people thinking about him in all of Eridanos. And I only am because you mentioned his name. If you leave woolly cow milk out, it turns to curds. Leave the curds out, they begin to get stale, then rot. Woolridge is on his way to the trash bin, and everyone knows it. Either he's in denial, or he knew Helen would be checking out soon, judging by his increasing demands for a room upgrade. That's a shame, Inspector. What if I wanted to know a little about you? A dashing gunslinger type, then. I'm sure the investigation will turn out splendidly in your hands. Or at least Mr. Kincannon seems confident enough to believe so. My inordinately esteemed guest. If my hello were any more earnest, this loudspeaker would explode. What authorized floor can I bring you to? Next stop, the finest seat in the house. Booth? Uh, he 
Even the air in here feels too sweet. Almost sticky. Pigsty! Slovenly! These premises are unsuitably disordered. Do you think it's strange that I kind of miss Ada? The longer we stay here, the more I can feel my mind softening. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. So this is what a clean room smells like. Inspector, I understand you've visited the scene of the crime. Halcyon Helen was an important cultural icon. She will be sorely missed. Halcyon Helen was more than a character. She was a brand. Her death will now be associated with Rizzo's Spectrum Brown. You understand why that worries me. I do not. Spacer's choice has that market cornered. Back to the matter at hand. Tell me about your investigation. Huh. I can't imagine she had any business outside the hotel. If you discover what she was doing at the orchard, please let me know. Here, I'm granting you access through the gates to the orchards. You're officially authorized to see this investigation through to the end. There is one caveat. Cedric's being rather intransigent about letting you into the spaceport. Possibly he's trying to hide something. Possibly he wants to annoy me. Possibly both. I agree with the sentiment behind your snide remark. Unfortunately, the Piraeus spaceport is Cedric's purview, not mine. You have a lead to chase. Law speed, Inspector. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. The imprint left inside this suitcase matches the silhouette of Halcyon Helen's iconic handgun, the Needler. The weapon was recently removed.
there's, um, there's no room service, right? Just asking. You think they'd object to me setting up a tanning station here? Did you know the smoke from high society cigarettes is 10.07% more likely to leave odor and discoloration in fabrics than other leading brands? Then I lick a few towels. They won't notice. This room ain't so bad. I could get used to this. <laughs> 